It's one of the most anticipated cars to launch this year, and it's also Audi's first long-range all-electric model. And according to those who've driven it, it's going to be pretty popular when it finally goes on sale later this year in the US. It's already on sale in parts of Europe. On paper too, the Audi e-tron looks to have some pretty good specs. There's 57 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats down. It's got all-wheel drive. It has a total power output of 265 kilowatts in regular driving mode, with an option to increase that to 302 kilowatts for short periods of time. And it has a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack capable of charging at speeds of up to 150 kilowatts from a compatible high power CCS quick charging station. But when Audi released its official EPA-approved range ratings for the mid-size electric crossover last week, the figures were nowhere near what we and most other commentators had expected. Instead of the 250 to 300 miles of range that we were all hoping for, I mean, it does after all have a 95 kilowatt hour battery pack, the Audi e-tron apparently has an EPA range of just 204 miles per charge. 204 miles? Well, that's less than the range possible in the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Hyundai Kona Electric, and their battery packs are 60 kilowatt hours and 64 kilowatt hours, respectively. Audi has been promising us incredible efficiency and a new innovative regenerative braking system that would give it unparalleled levels of energy recuperation. So what exactly is going on? Well, According to Audi, the mediocre range of the e-tron isn't because the car itself is particularly inefficient, but rather that the engineers at Audi have decided to prioritize longevity and performance over sheer range. Or to put it another way, Audi would rather the e-tron be rated at a range that's predictably achievable than try to engage in a range war that it may or may not win. The result is an over-engineered battery management solution that goes out of its way to try and nanny the battery pack as much as possible in order to extend its life as far into the future as it can. You see, there's a difference between nominal capacity of a battery pack, that's how much energy it's theoretically capable of storing, and how much actual usable energy there is inside the pack, i.e how much energy you can use to drive on a single charge. This is because lithium ion batteries don't generally like being fully charged or being taken down to fully empty. And so automakers, and in fact, any company using batteries in a product tend to reserve or hide a little bit of extra capacity at the bottom of the pack and a little at the top of the pack in an attempt to get the battery to remain as healthy as possible for as long as possible. The car or product doesn't tell you this, but what it does tell you is when it's empty, it's not actually 100% empty. And when it tells you it's full, it's not 100% full either. The closer you get to truly empty and the closer you get to truly full, the more strain you put on individual cells in the battery pack, the higher the risk of those cells experiencing physical damages and the higher the risk that they will prematurely age. It's the same as high temperatures. They are known for killing battery packs. So two is letting them get too full or too empty. The original Nissan Leaf, for example, had a nominal battery capacity of about 24 kilowatt hours, but the car only ever let you use about 21 kilowatt hours. Every other automaker does something reasonably similar, tweaking the actual capacity it uses depending on its own special source internal calculations and what it feels is acceptable. Tesla recently expanded the range of its Model 3 by essentially unlocking a little more capacity in the battery pack and allowing the battery to charge and discharge a little more than it had previously after determining that it was safe to do so. Audi's restricting of a battery pack capacity is a little more severe than some automakers out there, only allowing 83.6 kilowatt hours out of the total 95 kilowatt hours to be used. This adds a large buffer that has two very important knock-on effects. First, it increases the amount of time that the e-tron can charge at full power before it starts to tail off near full, because the car isn't technically as full as it says it is, so there is extra room for higher currents at the top of the charge. Second, it allows the car to provide a more uniform range per charge, even if you drive it really hard. This, Audi seems to suggest, 
is very important to its customers as it means its existing customers won't have to dramatically adjust their driving style in order to achieve the range that Audi says they should when they switch from petrol to electric. I'm going to add that it also protects Audi from owners getting upset and filing lawsuits when they can't get the range that it says in the adverts. Essentially, Audi is under-promising. For hardened fans of plug-in cars for whom range is king, I'm sure the e-tron could be coaxed to well beyond 300 miles with some careful use of the right foot. But it appears lessons have been learned from the mistakes of other automakers who went before. It's far better to say a car can travel a certain distance per charge, a shorter range, than promise a more impressive range that are just impossible to achieve in the real world. Do you think Audi's made a smart choice? Do you welcome that it's decided to range rate its e-tron using a total battery capacity that's smaller than other automakers? Or do you think that Audi is just making excuses for a poorly designed car? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.